We're in Columbus, Ohio today to check out the brand new Lower.com field, the home of the Columbus crew. And as always, this 41st game review episode is brought to you in partnership with Pull Tab Sports. Check them out at PullTabSports.com for all your content on Midwest sports and culture. And be sure to follow them on all the social media platforms since they help make all these videos possible. All right, now let's kick it. Opening in downtown Columbus in 2021, the stadium replaced the former Map Free Stadium, which opened in 1999 and was the first soccer-specific stadium that the MLS built and really set the trend and precedent of making soccer-specific stadiums in the United States. However, that older stadium just kind of felt like a glorified high school football stadium to me. But it did host many U.S. national team games. In their last full season there in 2020, they won the MLS Cup. As today, it's now known by Historic Crew Stadium. But out with the old and in with the new. As the new stadium is located in the Arena District. So before the match, we caught up with some of the supporters of the crew outside of the Columbus Blue Jackets nationwide arena. Let's go Jackets. There's actually some pretty good vibes in the bar and a recent new rule actually lets you take your beverages outside and around the whole arena district. We walked down with a lot of the supporters as you pass Huntington Park, the home of the AAA Columbus Clippers. And uh, hint, hint, maybe the next video. And then we showed up at Lower.com Field, as these three stadiums are now right all in a row. There's a lot of area inside the confines of the stadium itself that's not within the footprint of the stadium. So it's really open air, has a lot of grass, got a lot of games and festivities going on in this area. And this gave us a really good look at the exterior of the stadium, which definitely has a sleek modern design with a dark metallic look. And you get a pretty good view to downtown Columbus. Heading into the stadium and onto the concourse now, it definitely keeps that extremely modern industrial aesthetic. And the concourse is pretty closed in for the most part, but you have some good views when you get over by the supporters section, the Nordeca. And we'll talk about the supporters section a little bit more later on. And the concourse behind the Nordeca was actually really cool too, as they had a lot of nice decorations over there and also some open air picnic tables. And there actually are quite a few views down at the pitch from the concourse on the other side as well. Heading around the other side and past all the fancy club sections, they have a nice trophy room with all the cups on display, including their two MLS cups from 2008 and 2020. My favorite on display had to be the US Open Cup from 2002, as that's an absolutely beautiful trophy. For some background, I grew up in Ohio, but I actually never really liked the crew growing up, mostly because I honestly hated their original logo. Some of my friends at school would be wearing their kits, and I just couldn't bring myself to support a team that had three construction workers as a crest. But they've definitely come to grow on me with the things they've done in the community recently, and a rebranding certainly helped. But especially the rivalry with FC Cincinnati, who I have grown astray with. And uh, that's a whole separate topic, won't get into that now. But somehow, this former FC Cincinnati season ticket holder finds themselves on the Columbus side in the Hell is Real Derby. But I have a very hard time supporting the MLS and the whole US soccer system, which is just messed up. So let's back our local teams instead of the big money ones. Anyways, totally different subject, back to the stadium. With MLS stadiums trying to emulate European stadiums more and more, you get a more closed in roof design. Personally, I'm a big fan of this because that means that every fan's going to be undercover. And it also means that the whole concourse is undercover and protected from any rain or bad weather. There's just one main concourse that goes around the stadium and there are actually stairs that take you up to the second level of seating instead of it having its own concourse. And some views down to the pitch from the concourse continue here with some great drink rail seating. On the south end of the concourse where a lot of the food was, there was a large open plaza that led out to the street with tons of tables for congregating and eating up some grub. So let's check out the food. There were a lot of good food options around where we sat behind the goal opposite of the Nordeca. Alright, what is it? Mac and cheese, pulled pork? Pulled pork. Walking, walking taco, taco. 1050. 1050? Holy Yeah, mine was like, this was like $10. And this is 450 This was $12.50. That's a big beer. Yeah, my mom and sister weren't too happy about the food prices, but I kept it simple with some chicken and fries. And of course, gotta get that cue, the barbecue sauce to go with it. The stadium's layout is kind of what you'd expect from an MLS stadium, holding a capacity of 20,371 fans, with a large single tier supporter section at one end, and two levels of seating at all the other sides of the pitch. Apparently their new crest is supposed to reflect the footprint of the stadium, with the sea making the stands, but I'm not too sure about that. The team really likes using these abstract geometric patterns throughout their branding, and those continue on with the seating colors as well. 
With the stadium being so closed in, on a lot of summer nights, it does feel really hot and sticky in there. And I would really hope that the open corners of the stadium would let in a little more breeze than they did. But I was feeling ridiculously overheated while there. The upper sections on the side of the pitch where the team dugouts are is completely private seating, and there's a ton of private seating throughout the place. And that's probably my biggest gripe about all these new MLS stadiums. They put these fancy, expensive private seating right on the side of the pitch. No, no, no. Your craziest supporters should be the ones right on the side of the pitch, not the rich people that are there with a company event. And speaking of the craziest supporters, the North Decket at the north end of the stadium has rail seating throughout, so it's safe standing, and they also have the possibility to fold down the seats to their bleachers. I'm a huge supporter of safe standing at soccer stadiums, and this is something that the MLS has done super well recently. As this 37 degree single stand has the second largest capacity of any supporter section in the MLS, fitting over 30 300 fans and they brought the noise all night and they even showed a QR code on the scoreboard so you can get all the chance. As the players came out to the pitch, Elvis Presley's famous I can't help falling in love with you is always blared over the loudspeakers as everyone sings out I can't help falling in love with crew. The game that I went to was actually a full year ago, to be honest with you. I'm way behind in editing. But at the time, it was a top of the table clash as two heavyweights in the Eastern Conference were going at it as a crew hosted NYCFC. The in-game entertainment was pretty good as the crowd was getting hyped and the mascot crew cat was definitely making his rounds. Unfortunately, New York really put a damper on it as they jumped out to an extremely early 1-0 lead. But in classic Columbus fashion, you had to spell out the team you're cheering for. As it's very common at Ohio State games, the OHIO chant goes around the stadium. And here they did the same thing, but with C R E W. <laughs> 20 minutes in, the crew drew level, and the yellow and black smoke was billowing out of the Nordeka. and only seven minutes later, they struck again to go up 2-1. After every time the crew score a goal, they have a tradition that's very similar to the Portland Timbers, who always saw off a piece of a big log and pass that slab all around the supporter section. Well, with the crew being true to their construction and hardworking industrial roots, they have someone chisel off a brick with a jackhammer. During halftime, they had some local youth soccer players out kicking around. But once things were back underway for the second half, Discount Manchester City quickly found their equalizer. But the crew immediately started to put the pressure back on NYCFC. And they took that 3-2 lead in the 75th minute of the match. And the vibes in the stadium remained up to push them out through the full 90 and secure the 3-2 victory. Honestly, a fantastic game for my first time at the Crew Stadium. And the Nordeka kept the party alive. And to be honest with you, coming from someone that's extremely anti-MLS as you saw earlier, I was actually extremely impressed with the authentic atmosphere that was created here. Because I know that's not the case around the entire league. But I think that's one of the benefits that the club has being one of the original members of the MLS beginning play in 1996. And it seems like everyone else is just trying to catch up.
but caps off to the crew and their supporters for making this a fantastic atmosphere and really giving their side the home field advantage. And that's going to do it here at Lower.com Field. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can see lots more videos just like this one. And I will see you again very soon for another stadium review. Thanks. Bye.